Hey what's up guys Josh here and this is the tutorial of rising controller and if you don't know what rising controller does well it is basically a third party utility that helps you to tweak different parameters of your ryzen cpu and it just enables you to make your cpu work according to your needs like you can control the cp tdp uh, the temperature limit the long boost tdp and etc etc for instance if your cpu is running hot it's going over 90 degrees celsius or even 100 degrees celsius while playing some intensive games and if you don't want your cpu to uh, reach those limits then in such situations you can install the rising controller open it and tweak some settings there and that pretty much helps you to overcome such situations and this is going to be a little bit comprehensive tutorial so brace yourself for that and in this video we are going to see a lot of things about rising controller all right let's start from the scratch from downloading the rising controller application so this is the website the official website of rising controller the link for this website is down below in the description and here click on the download button and now here you can see a client that says rising controller team is not liable for any damages that may occur from using rising controller well the climb is legitimate because it has the potential to create some serious damages to your cpu it has the potential to even destroy your cpu if you put arbitrary values in rising controller all right here what you have to do is you have to click here now this redirects you to another website and here click on the windows installer icon right here and now click on the setup file of ryzen controller and here click on download and this is the user interface of Ryzen controller and as you can see there are different sections that are given here CPU, GPU, power and etc. And under the CPU section essentially there are 6 parameters that are under it. Now one of the cool things about Ryzen controller is that it has a very simple user interface unlike Intel XT or throttle stop which is a little bit intimidating. Now first of all you have the temperature limit and also there is an eye icon that is next to every parameter which has the definition of what that exact setting does. Now first of all you have the temperature limit here and this essentially limits the temperature of the CPU and now if you had set a temperature limit here and then once it's, once the CPU reaches that limit then the boost periods will autonomously end and also setting the temperature limit over 95 degrees celsius is generally not advised because that's the point where the Ryzen CPUs usually thermal throttle now another important thing to notice that the lower the temperature limit the higher the fan noise because if you had set a lower temperature limit uh, then the fans has to run as fast as they can in order to prevent the CPU from exceeding the limit that you had set. So don't put uh, uh, put the temperature limit too low if you don't want to hear your laptop sounding like a jet engine. And also if you had set a, a, a low temperature limit then the boost periods will also end quickly. Now moving on we have the CPU TDP which is the long term power draw of the CPU. And now here the higher the value the higher the performance and the higher the power consumption. And also the higher the heat produced and the fan noise unless you have a better cooling solution so if you wanna uh, increase the cpu tdp make sure that your cpu make sure that your laptop has a better cooling solution all right now moving on we have the long boost duration but let me get into that in a minute now first of all let's take a look at the long boost tdp now this is the temporary boost in the tdp now uh, the long boost tdp should always be higher than the cpu tdp setting it lower or equal to the cpu tdp is gonna have no effect and coming back, the long boost duration is the duration for which the CPU has to use the long boost TDP. But one important thing to note is that if you had set a temperature limit or if the CPU throttles before the temperature limit, then the boost period will automatically end and it has no effect in such cases. So when it comes to rising controller, when you're setting a specific thing, you should also uh, you should also think about if it is affected by other settings. So, you should not necessarily have to check all the boxes that you are seeing right here in most cases the cpu tdp and the temperature limit is enough uh, you can leave the other settings to auto by leaving it unchecked so there is a chance that one parameter is affected by setting another parameter so just keep in mind about that thing now moving on we have the short boost tdp which is sort of an intermediate between the long boost tdp and the cpu tdp so it has got to be higher than the CPU TDP and it's got to be lower than the long boost TDP that you had said. Uh, setting it equal to the CPU TDP or lower than that is going to have no effect. You better leave it unchecked. And short boost TDP is going to be used right after the long boost TDP ends. And the short boost duration is the duration for which it has to use the short boost TDP. 
and also using Ryzen controller you can also create presets that you can use in different scenarios let's say that I want a preset that I want to use for every time uh, that I want to use every time when I play games so now what I have what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the boxes that I want to be modified uh, in, my, in my case I want the temperature limit and the CPU temp uh, CP DDP to be modified now first of all the, in the temperature limit I'm gonna set a temperature limit like uh, 90 degrees Celsius because I don't want the temperature limit to be too low because uh, if I set the temperature limit to be too low like I said uh, the fans are going to uh, make extremely bad noises and also the performance is going to be compromised moreover setting the temperature limit over 95 degrees Celsius is not good for Ryzen CPUs because that's the point where usually most Ryzen CPUs do thermal throttle and then you have the CPU DDP you can set it based on your laptop's configuration and then once you have set things you do not necessarily have to check all the boxes like I said previously just check the boxes that you know about that you uh, that you want to be modified and after all that hit create preset that you can see right here and then give it a name in my case I'm gonna give it gaming preset all right now it is it has been saved and I can find my presets right in this preset section as you can see the presets that I just created is right here and I can apply it and delete it right from here now moving on we have the GPU section and the first two things that you see right here are for the integrated GPU uh, the minimum and the maximum clock frequency value of the integrated graphics card that you want your uh, iGPU to run it now if your CPU doesn't have an integrated graphics card then you can move on to the next uh, values the minimum and maximum infinity fabric frequencies now if you don't know about infinity fabric frequencies well in theory infinity fabric is a fabric or an interconnected architecture that facilitates the data and control transmission or flow of data from die to all its linked components so technically the more the maximum infinity fabric frequency value the higher the transmission speed however there's a constraint that is the maximum infinity fabric value should be equal to the memory clock of the RAM that is in your machine so the FCLK value should be equal to the MCLK value unless the memory clock is over 3.6 GHz for lower latency and higher performance for instance the memory clock of my RAM is 3200 MHz which will be tied to 1600 MHz FCLK value assuming that my uh, laptop has dual channel memory so essentially I can set the maximum infinity fabric value to up to 1600 MHz for better performance and lower latency and leave the minimum infinity fabric frequency at its minimum and that's it for the GPU section and moving on we have the power section and here I want to say one thing in the power section you better leave the things you better leave the variables unchanged because it has the potential to damage to make some serious damages to your CPU so you better leave the things to auto unless you know what it does and the parameters here are pretty self-explanatory that if you move the cursor over the icon it pops up a definition of what it does now here the most useful thing is the VRM current ampere which in my opinion setting or uh, raising the VRM current over uh, 5 ampere or 7 ampere is enough more than that is it's not good for your CPU because most of the laptops coming these days does not have better VRM cooling so overall in my view you better leave these things to auto alright now moving on at last we have the settings panel which is pretty much self-explanatory now here I want you to do one thing that uh, in most cases in, uh, in some cases the Ryzen controller the settings that you had uh, done with the Ryzen controller will sometimes vanish from effect so if you are encountering such problems then I want you to set uh, some values here like 60 or 40 which uh, makes the Ryzen controller to reapply the settings that you had set every 60 or 40 seconds and apart from that they have some information basic information about your laptop and that's all so that's it for this video guys that's my tutorial of Ryzen controller I hope you learned something new today and if you do like our content then hit the subscribe button to join our community and thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video